So um, you, you all should have been downloaded the uh, data preparation tool. Perhaps some of you already have tried it a bit. Um, I, I haven't, I just have the zip file. So I'll just start with unzipping what I downloaded once my computer has found its way. And when you have unzipped and opened the folder, you actually have, depending on, on what system you are using, you have two options to start the data preparation tool. Either by double clicking on the launch but file, or if that doesn't work, you could also try the file with the long nice name. Uh, so just starting with ape, I think that's, <laughs> I won't spell out the whole name. I want to open. And, and normally when it's the first start for the tool, uh, it always needs a little bit of time because it's actually building all the, the tables in the back end that are needed for doing the processing. Uh, but once that is finished, you actually should have something like this. I'm sorry it's in German because I'll swap to change to English uh, when we're in the tool. Uh, so you're asked to include the identifier of your institution first. So if you can memorize what identifier you gave your institution when creating your EAG file, that would be the code you would enter here. So in my case, it was gp-archive-1. And in the second step, you are asked to repeat your country code, the two-letter country code, which is later on used to identify the section of the conversion style sheet that would be used with your uh, data. And once this is done, the data preparation tool should be open and should look like this. So actually completely empty as the tool doesn't know yet what we want to do. So first thing is that we go to file and then we select a file that we want to process. And that's, now, now it's the time where you need to get to the test files that you have downloaded from the Dropbox. wherever you have saved them. I'm just trying to memorize where I have mine. And then we select the file that is called FA12345. So just mark it by clicking and then click choose. And then the file should appear in your files list in the data preparation tool. And now we can actually start doing something with the file. And the first step is just a recommendation. Um, but we have found cases that it's really useful to do this beforehand. And that would just be to validate your file against EAD 2002. So we change here to EAD 2002 in the schema section. And then we click on validate and keep fingers crossed. And you then should see a notification that validation has been completed. Ideally, your file would be in green which actually means it's okay. 
And then you see that uh, one of the tabs over here is lightened up and uh, we just skip to this tab and just check what it's telling us. And that's um, just an, a translation message, not, not yet translated. So it says the document is valid. So we are set and we now would like to convert this file to APAD because we want to upload it later on to the portal. So we change back to APAD at the bottom because that's our target format. And then we click on convert and see what happens. And you should again have a notification that conversion has been finished. And you see that the conversion tab is highlighted. So we just change to that one and have a look what it's telling us. Um, in this case, as I'm using a country that is not yet known to the data preparation tool, it just tells me no country code we will use the default transformation. Some of you whose countries are already registered uh, should actually see your country code is and then whatever the country code is. And this conversion report also shows you elements that have not been included yet in the transformation. Uh, so this is actually a point where you can check your own data and see, okay, what from my own data is perhaps at the moment not taken when I convert the, the file to Ape EAD and is, is there something in these elements that would be essential and that I would like to have included in the data that I provide to the Archives Portal Europe. So this is actually your point where you can check and where you can see, um, hey, Work Package 5, could you just uh, have a look at our conversion script and see that this information is also included. Um, in this case, it's, it's the element sponsor that is left out um, as it's not defined in Ape EAD at the moment. Um, so Actually, this message is fine, so we just leave it like that. And then we go back to our summary tab and then we validate the file that we have just converted just to be sure that everything is okay. So we click on the button validate and again get the message that validation is completed and we change back to the validation tab to just see if everything went fine and in this case, Yes, great, everything went fine. So the document is valid. It's converted to Ape EAD. And so we go back to the file menu and we save this file that we have just converted so that we can use it later on for uploading. The, th the second thing that we would like to do is to convert a file that includes links to digital images. So we have a look at the options menu. And of course this happens now. So um, at the options menu, you have something that is very cryptic at the moment. We uh, have chosen a better uh, label for this in the next version of the data preparation tool. At the moment it says optional default role type. And when you click on this, you actually see these different digital object types that you can use. And in this case it's image, so we change to image. And we click OK. And then we select the next file in our list. So we go back to select file or directory. And we select the file FA23456. And we again convert and check what the conversion report tells us. In this case, everything is fine. Every elements that had been in the file have been taken. And we validate the file again. And also check the validation report. And it again says the document is valid. So everything is set and fine. So we can also save 
this file to use it later on. What you can also do is to not have to repeat these steps per file. You can select several files. So when we go back to our test files, we could select the file FA3456. And when you hold the control button, you can actually select this file with it, 56789. And we then include these files in the data preparation tool again. And then you will see that at the bottom of the list, these buttons have become active. So these are the batch processing buttons, and there we can actually convert and validate all the files that we have selected in one step. So we click on this. And then we see something that we actually do not want to see, which is a file whose name is in red. So something went wrong with this file. So we have to look, okay, what happened here? So let's first have a look at the conversion report. That actually looks fine. So all elements have been included. So validation, bad thing. <laughs> and actually it, it already shows that it's a bad thing because it's a complicated, the report that we get. So actually we can skip the first part. We just go to the, the last line, which is saying, you are using the forbidden va value 9112 slash 1913 in the attribute normal of the element unit date. So what went wrong here? During the conversion, we are actually trying to normalize all the date information that is in the unit date element, so the date of creation of the files. Um, into normalized state, so into the ISO standard 8601. And um, as long as we can do this automated, it will be done. And of course, after validation, uh, the normal attribute is checked um, if everything is fine and went fine. And actually, it's most likely that there's simply a typo in the original data. So it's most likely that the running dates actually should have been 1912 to 1913 and not 9112. So we could have a look at the original file. Um, come Because actually this, this error is something that already is in the original file. So this error is, is not something that I would like to just correct in the validated, in the converted file, but that I actually would like to correct already in my own data. So we are just searching for this, for this 9110, 12. Come on. And yeah, we see, so it's, the unit date element giving the running dates and we just should correct this. So it's 1912 to 1913 and then we just save this as another file. And when we change back to the data preparation tool and repeat the steps, So we take the updated version now. And convert this again. And we validate again. And yes, it's green. <laughs> so we have two files that we still need to save. The first two we already have, but the updated one and the FA34567 
we need to save once more. So we mark them and click save all Ape EAD files so that all of them would be saved. And then we might just want to have a look at this output folder that is always mentioned when we save a file. So where is this output folder actually? So when you go back to the folder where the data preparation tool is and have a look at this, you will see the output folder here. And you see four files that are correct and that actually was our first try with the non-valid file. That's why it says not ABRD. So we can actually delete this one just to be sure that we don't take it later on. Well, we, before we change back to the dashboard and start uploading, we actually, even though it's just four files that we have, we would like to create a holdings guide with these. So we mark all the files that we want like to be included. So the first three and the last one in this case. And we click on create holdings guide. And as the holdings guide also is an ED file, we would like to have a title for this and an identifier. So we just say it's the holdings guide of archive one in my case. And as identifier, we just use the abbreviation HT for holdings guide that will do it for the moment. And click on yes to confirm what we just did. And in the second page, you actually could also add a short description of your holdings guide. So you could add a description that it's, I don't know, structured according to different periods of time, uh, that it contains collections from a specific uh, family or whatever p uh, applies to your holdings guide. I'm going to skip this at the moment and just save. And now we see in the middle, so this is the holdings guide. At the moment, there is no structure or whatever in this. And on the right, we have the finding aids that we have selected and that we want to create a holdings guide with. So we could just mark the finding aids. And actually, we can't. Sorry, forget. Um, so first thing is we, we need to create a group in our holdings guide. So we do a right click. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just going to repeat it because mine obviously doesn't want to at the moment. So, come on. So. You, you mark the files that you want to be included and then create holdings guide. You click on, on that. And so I hope it works now. Okay. So Obviously, my data preparation tool don't, doesn't want to at the moment. Uh, so, but you could try to, to do a right click on the title of your holdings guide, and then you should see a submenu saying, at level below. And when you do this, you would again have this screen where you could enter an identifier, a title for the subgroup. It's, um, I probably need to restart the tool.
yes.
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a little bit of troubles with creating the uh, holdings guide. Um, I'm not sure if, if any one of you had been able to add a group to her or his holdings guide. If you have done this, you can actually mark the finding aids and drag and drop them to this group. And just, and then they should be included in, in the group. I just can't show you at the moment as, as mine doesn't, doesn't want to. I could show you. So, so it, it should have looked like, like this. So, <coughs> come on. So you would right click on the level where you would lo like to add a, a sub level. And the next step would then be to mark the finding aids and drag and drop them to the level that you want to integrate them in. And once you've finished, you can put the button save and then your holdings guide that you have just created would show up in the list on the left. And then you should also validate this file And hopefully it shows that the file is valid and then you can do the same as for the finding aids which is saving the holdings guide file in your output folder. So let's, let's prepare for uploading data. So we have some files in our output folder that we have um, converted and these would be the files that we would like to take. So I just copy these over here. And then we also have some more files in the um, country folder that you've downloaded which we didn't have uh, prepared yet in the data preparation tool. So we are going to take these as well. So I'm going to take go for my folder and then we are going to take the one starting with four and then sec six, seven, eight and nine as well. I'll just copy them over here. And in order to not having to upload all of the files one by one we're just going to create a zip with them. I hope I can get every one, two, no, come on. Come on. 
need to do anything today. Okay. So now we can change back to our dashboard accounts. And when we are there, you should have the menu upload content and that is what we want to do now. So we are going to click on this. And in this upload interface, you see the three methods on how you can upload. Um, as we don't have FTP and we don't have OEPMH available here at the moment, we are going to upload via HTTP. So we are um, searching for the zip folder that we've just created with our converted or not yet converted files. And we include it in the dashboard by, by clicking the upload button, which will take a bit and then it will show you the files that you've just uploaded. And the next step then would be to change to the content manager. And when we do this, there are actually some checks that are done with the files. And at the first step, it actually is asking, okay, is your file a finding aid or is it a holdings guide? And as you can see, the holdings guide that we have created is already recognized as holdings guide. So we can just leave it as it is and accept. And in this second screen, we see that most of the files have gone through without any problems, but one file does have a problem because there is no identifier given for this file in the element EAD ID. And we need this identifier in order to not mess up all the files we have in our back end with each other. So we actually need to add an EAD ID for this. And we will just use the name of the file beginning with our country code. So in my case, it's GP, and then I just use the name FA12345. No, it's not that one. It's actually 45678. And just to be sure that this file doesn't already exist on the dashboard, we check the availability of the identifier that we just entered. And lucky enough, this ADRD is available, so we can continue by clicking the accept button. And now you see the list of files that we have uploaded, but you see that there, in, in every column there is a no, because they have not yet been processed on the dashboard. So we have to do the processing on the dashboard now and therefore we, in that case, we simply just click select all to do a batch processing. And then we will see if, when all of us are doing this now, <laughs> the system stands up or crashes. <laughs> so we are going to do a batch processing with all the steps that are necessary in order to, in the end, publish the files on the portal and this is by selecting all and pressing the go button. And then you see, okay, 
all of my files are at the moment in the processing queue to be converted, validated, and published. And actually, you will have to refresh the page at the moment to see how the process is going on. So um, obviously, I'm not being the only one doing this. Um, so there are a lot of more files in the queue at the moment. So that's why my files are not yet processed, uh, because some of you obviously have been quicker as me. Um, So it just might take a little bit. And depending on how many files you have been uploaded, you can actually log out and log in in about two hours again and check what happened. Um, so I hope we don't have to wait two hours here. But in the meantime, I actually can show you something else. Because when you look at the files that are listed here, you see that all the files are actually named finding aid. And you remember that we also uploaded the holdings guide. So where is the holdings guide? And that's where we come to this upper section here. So at the moment, actually, the type finding aid is checked. And that's why we are only shown the finding aids. So we are going to change to holdings guide. And we are going to confirm our change with clicking the search button. And now we see that our holdings guide is actually in the content manager, so it's not lost. But we also see this, of course, also needs to be processed. And as it's just one file, we could, for instance, just uh, do the step-by-step -step processing here. So we start with not the conversion, because we actually have created this with the um, with, with the data preparation tool, so we don't need to do a conversion. So we select validation and click the go button. And then you see that it's now in the queue for validation. And we'll see how long this takes. <laughs> This is just might take a while in real time at the moment. I'm just changing back to the presentation to, ch to show you what we would have seen. Um, so so that, that was the, the place where we left our finding aid. So everyone, everything is uh, put in the, in the queue. Um, and actually, depending on the status of the queue, you could also see a screen like this one. So the first four finding aids are already processed. So they have this nice green yeses and numbers of uh, um, units that have been published. And you can see that the, the fifth one is actually currently in processing. That's why it's uh, light gray and it's saying queue processing. And the other ones are still waiting to be processed. And once the finding aids are processed, you will also see that this column holdings guide is not yet filled as we haven't processed our holdings guide yet. So that's why we had done this in the parallel section of the content manager to actually create the link or make the link active. So that is what I just showed you, to changing to the holdings guide part of the content manager and processing the holdings guide as well. And once the holdings guide is processed, 
you can see that they are finding it li it's linked now. And when you change back to your finding aids se section, you can see that actually all the finding aids that we have used to create the holdings guard that we've uploaded now have the identifier of the holdings guard in this column. You also see that the rest of them hasn't because, of course, we haven't used them, so it's actually obvious that they are not linked at the moment. And so how does this look like on, on the portal? On the portal, you actually would also have these two sections. So you would have one section that starts with your holdings guide and has included the finding aids that you have used to create the holdings guide. And you, then you would have the section additional finding aids, which lists the other finding aids that are not connected. And you can also see that from, from this part, you could also access the second display of the files to see how they look like. And this would then just be a check. So once our files are uploaded, and you remember that we had uh, one file where we chose the, the image type for the digital objects. So this would just be a check if that worked out. So we could just check mark our country and check mark the uh, option only material with digital objects to see just these files. And we would then do a search on the portal. Um, our search results might look like this. So you see that uh, we have different icons for the different types of digital objects. And this also would then be in the second display. And it's a quarter to 12. <laughs> you probably all are starving, but if you have any questions, suggestions, ideas at the moment or later on during the day, please just uh, address me, come to me and, and let's talk about this. Or if anyone wants to comment, Right now, please feel free to do so. <clears throat> Otherwise, I just recommend you the two sessions in the afternoon, where uh, on the one hand, Johan and Stefan will be there to actually sit down with you and check your own data if you have brought some along. Uh, just seeing, okay, how is it working out at the moment? Uh, what, went, what can we do to, to have it work? And the second session would be to just speak about what you have seen so far in this, in this morning session, or if you have already tried the dashboard or the data preparation tool with your own data at home, just speaking about your experiences with these two tools and what you think uh, is not clear enough or what you think could be additional ideas on how to improve the tools. So I thank you very much for your attention. And you can find more information on our project website, of course, on the archivesupporteurope.net. Or you can always send me an email and ask questions. Yes, yeah. So uh, it, it's possible to, to have your data harvested instead of uploading it. Um, but it might be that we need to check if the configuration of our harvester is already ready for your data. Because at the moment, only two of our partners are using this. Okay, so, so it's, it's yeah. But uh, I think Johan wants to add three. Okay. 